All right, Algebra 2, welcome back, guys. We are officially in the last section of Chapter 2. All right, so we are at 2.9 right now. Uh, title of this section, Absolute Value Functions. All right, have your textbooks open to page 158. And make sure that you are following along with our notes here. Two charts that you need to copy down. Uh, one chart's on page 158, the other 159. Copy down those charts. It is going to really help you in terms of making the connection from section 6 and flowing in to absolute values with the same concepts that we did in section 6. Okay, So one thing here, they will uh, use the phrase like the parent function of absolute value, and this is what it looks like. Okay, So it makes this perfect V shape going through the origin 0, 0. And that's what a basic parent function would look like. f of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay. Now, I know I already said it, but guys, it is vital that you remember or review or refresh, whatever you want to call it, all the info from section 6. Okay. I know... Um, Multiple people may have struggled with section six, and guys, make sure that you ask questions if you are still struggling, because all of that info from section six needs to be used for section nine. It's just that now we are doing it with absolute values, okay? So everything there is gonna get used, and I know I said this in the Zoom, but you will use all that info again and again and again throughout the whole year, all right? So it is important that you get a good grasp upon that right now. All right, let's go one little bit here on the notes. Read through all those example problems. I'm gonna do examples in this video. You guys have examples right there in front of you in the textbook. Read through examples one to three, all parts. And then I looked up a couple Khan Academy videos for you there, so if you just go ahead and type those um, URLs into uh, whatever internet browser, you guys are going to get some more video help. Okay, so there's a couple Khan Academy videos specifically focused on graphing absolute value functions and translating absolute value functions. Okay, so that's just more help for you guys. Use the help. If you're struggling, use the extra help. Ask me, watch the videos, ask someone in class that understands um, the material. Okay, let's jump into our example problems. Here we go. So we are asked to transform the parent function f of x equals absolute value x. And I just wanted to present that basically you could think of those absolute value bars just like parentheses around x, okay? So if something is inside the absolute value bars right next to x, you know that that is directly affecting the x value. If you put it outside the absolute value bars, then that means it is affecting the whole function. So that is important to grasp. Inside the absolute value bars means it's affecting x. Outside the absolute value bars means it's affecting the whole function. Okay, so there's a big difference there. All right, let's jump into our first one here. We are asked to translate four units down. Now, if you remember back in section six, a vertical translation that's up and down is something that is outside parentheses, and in this case, outside the absolute value bars, okay? So let's jump into the first one. We will represent this as g of x equals, and remember, absolute value bars have to be around the x, and vertical translations are outside of that. So four units down, it's a very literal translation, say minus four. There we go, done deal. All right, now the next one that we have here, we take the parent function, f of x equals absolute value x, but we wanna translate it two units to the right. Now this is a horizontal translation, and horizontal translations directly affect x. Not the whole function, but directly affecting x. So, again, start by saying g of x equals but this will now be inside the absolute value bars. And we're gonna have x, and remember, think opposites. When you wanna do a horizontal translation, this says two units to the right, but you will be doing 
minus 2, and then close the absolute value bar. Okay, so remember, horizontal translations, it's a little bit opposite inside. If they say right, you write subtraction. If they say left, you use addition. Okay, things to remember. And there we go. That's moving on into example three. So again, translate the parent function, f of x equals absolute value x. So the vertex, all right? Now the vertex right here, this is a key term you have to know. The vertex, and think of, for our case, the vertex is going to be the center of the graph, not the center like zero, zero. That's the origin. For us, the vertex is going to be the point where the V is at the bottom, where those two rays connect. That's our vertex point. Okay. They give us a point, four comma negative two. The X value is going to represent the horizontal shift. And remember, the horizontal shift happens inside of the absolute value bars. The Y value represents the vertical shift. That happens outside of the absolute value bars. All right, now let's put all that together. So we have G of X equals, let's start with our absolute value bars, X, and that is a positive four, which would be go to the right positive four times, but inside of the absolute value bars, that means minus four. Remember, always do the opposite for horizontal shifts. Now, the Y value represents the vertical shift. That's outside the absolute value bars, and you take it very literal. It says negative two, so we will say minus two. Okay, there's our brand new function with the vertex at four comma negative two. All right, now, number four, we will be reflecting across the y-axis, but now they're giving us a full complete function. We're not using a parent function. We're given this f of x function right here. Now, if you remember that reflecting across the y-axis only, all right, I'm going to put off to the side here, only changes x all right when you reflect across the y it only changes x that means it does not affect the whole entire function it's just affecting x within the function so let's rewrite we have g of x equals that negative sign is still there but the absolute value bar but reflecting across the y like i said only changes the x so what is the X in the original? It's a positive. It's a positive. So we make it a negative now. And then everything else in the function stays the same. Minus four, close the bar, plus three. Okay? So that would cover a reflection across the Y. All right, and let's go ahead and circle that. There we go. Okay, moving on to example number five. Almost done here, guys. A vertical compression by a factor of one half. Now, again, remember back to section six. A vertical compression or a vertical stretch affects the whole entire function, meaning it's going to be on the outside affecting everything within the original function, okay? So let's go g of x equals, remember, vertical affects the whole function, everything. So we're gonna put one half on the outside, and now I do have to incorporate parentheses because I need to take this original function right here and put it all together so that the one half will affect everything. So now rewrite the original. Absolute value x plus 1. Close the parentheses to show that everything in the original is being affected by the 1 half on the outside. And there is our g of x function. Okay. Let's move into our final example problem, example 6. A horizontal stretch by a factor of 
two. Now this is a horizontal stretch, meaning it does affect X and only X. Okay, so again, if you look back at section six, you'll see that this is where we have to do a one over the factor. Okay, look back at section six. This is where you're gonna have one over the given factor. All right, now what does that look like? Let's rewrite this. We're gonna have g of x equals, okay? Notice those bars are right around the x, so we will now put our factor inside the bars. One over, and what's the given factor? Two. Now you have the original four x, close the bar, minus three. There's one added step here. Because we have the one half times the four, remember the four was given right here, we do have to simplify this. So we have g of x equals, and now you have one half times four, so absolute value bar, two x. One half times four is two, that's what gave us that close the bar, minus three, okay? So I'd say of all of the different types of translations, the horizontal stretch is the one you really gotta pay close attention to because it deals with this guy right here. You gotta do one over the given factor, and that might mean you have to simplify uh, a new expression, combine like terms, whatever it may be, and then get to your final solution, okay? Where the other ones are a little bit more straightforward, this one has that added step. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you. That is the final section in chapter two, section nine, remembering that section six is super important to get section nine, all right? Ask questions if you have them. Ask a, a classmate if they get it, all right? If you don't wanna ask me, ask a classmate. Look on Khan Academy, do what you got to do, stay motivated, all right? Keep pushing yourself. You guys can do this. All right, see you in the next one.